a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Christian ministries in the domestic violence space are working to address the growing needs across communities. Our special guest today is a 20-year veteran working in family and domestic violence. Matt Bolton leads the Circuit Breaker program. He's best known as the author of Changing Tools and the Circuit Breaker program. He specializes in domestic violence cases and working with perpetrators. He also produced a documentary for the Joint Church's Domestic Violence Prevention Project called Not In My Church, and it has been widely used as a training resource for clergy. And Matt Bolden, I'd like you to welcome you to the studios today here at Vision on 2020. Thanks very much, Andrew. It's good to be back here again. Well, it's always good to have good-looking people like you, Matt, because it gives all of us hope that uh, there's still hope for us. But, um, Matt, we are talking about a very serious topic today. Domestic violence is a big issue in Australia, and it's a growing issue in Australia. Can you uh, give us some stats and just how prevalent is domestic violence in Australia today? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Um, There's probably a lot of people thinking to themselves, it, it seems like we see... A, a, a domestic homicide every week. It seems like we're, we're every week we're seeing a story like this. And the fact is we are, and we have been for quite a long time. Uh, in Australia, we've been losing one woman per week as a result of uh, domestic homicides or, or a murder by a current or former partner. And uh, Queensland's actual domestic violence Homicides have just gone up fifty percent last year, which is really so. So alarming. the trend is up. It's yeah, not. It's, it's not up. static. It's actually a growing problem. No, it's been a problem that's been that's been going up since COVID, uh, since lockdowns. But before that, we already had a national epidemic. We already had one in four women from the age of fifteen upwards that would experience abuse from a current or former partner. We had police being called to a domestic violence incident every two minutes. And, is that Queensland, is it? Uh, that's that's national. Oh, that's yeah, national. National figure. Yeah. So we really have a problem. You know, if there, if there was if there was a, a woman losing her life every week from a toaster, uh, that toaster would certainly be off the market and, um, we, you know, we'd be asking some questions. So uh, unfortunately, we know that the trends during COVID lockdowns increased. Um, there was hard data on that. So Google searches for domestic violence help were going up 75%. Uh, there were... 75% increases in uh, frontline services being requested for help. And the, the figures that really don't lie were uh, hospital admissions for emergen- in emergency rooms for domestic violence, and they were, they were up 65%. And we don't really seem to have seen these figures coming downwards. Yeah, so because obviously a counter-argument would be forgetting the deaths and the serious assaults that are being hospitalised, a counter-argument would be years ago people just put up with this. They didn't tell anyone. It wasn't Mm. reported. And now, thanks to government initiatives and I think thanks to more community awareness, I think people are obviously more inclined to report. But, yeah, like you said, if those deaths are increasing and the hospitalizations are increasing, this is really sad. This is really tragic that that this is a major problem, isn't it? That's right, yeah. And I think that that's the answer to that, Andrew, that, you know, a lot of people do think that, 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 that it's just about us being a bit more open about the subject, and that's a great thing. But, yeah, those stats don't lie, and the hospital admissions. So it's um, it's a sad situation that we're in, and it does appear to be getting worse. Yeah. Matt, what is the government doing about this? And let's do federal and state. You sure. uh, are based in Queensland. Let, let's start with the federal government. What is the federal mm. government of Australia trying to do about this? Well, the federal government in 2022, uh, the Labor government, uh, ministers Amanda Rishworth and Katie Gallagher uh, announced uh, what they called an ambitious national plan on family violence and uh, with the ambitious goal to end domestic violence within one generation. Uh so you'd have to, you, you certainly can't argue that that's ambitious. When was that announced? Uh, that was uh, October of 2022. Yeah, so a couple of years ago. So and, or... I, I was excited about that. <laughs> Not really, but uh, but I did look look into it straight away. And I think from the first paragraph of that plan, I could see it was destined to failure. And once again, it's another policy doing the same, the same old, same old that's been failing. And the focus of that plan was very much on 
in their own words, social, cultural, political, and economic factors contributing, yeah. which is not really where the not really where I believe the solution is. Well, it's idealism, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like communism. Communism is a great yeah. idea. You know, let's just level the playing field. Let's all work hard each day, get paid the same amount. There's no rich, there's no poor. It all sounds good, but it doesn't work, does it? Because there's no actual practical steps to create that utopia that they think they're going to bring in. And mm. statements like that, I oh, will abolish it within one generation. Uh, it's very easy for a politician to say that because in one generation, they'll no longer be in office and they're no longer accountable for their statements. And then they'll say, oh, well, we tried. That's it. Uh, it's just idealism because, yeah, if you're going to say that, you've got to tell us how we're going to achieve that. Mm. And so w- repeat those um, those key words you said before they said the, the key reasons are. Well, they believe that by focusing on, on social, cultural, political, and economic factors, that that's really where the solution's going to come. Yeah. But the problem with that is, Andrew, I think, and this is something that we saw during COVID lockdowns, is that... Um, Sometimes I like to go down to the river and if I go down at low tide, I'll see rocks that have been there the whole time, but they're only revealed at low tide. And I think that's what we saw with COVID lockdowns that people were saying, oh, COVID lockdowns are causing domestic violence. No, they don't cause domestic violence. Alcohol doesn't cause domestic violence. And none of these social factors cause domestic violence. Uh, Social pressures just reveal the problems that have been there all along. And, yep. you know, people like you and me, we're under the same pressures yep. and we're not using that as an excuse to abuse people. So, you know, I think that there's a, a deeper problem that's not going to be legislated out of out of fashion. It's uh, So just repeat those again. We had economic, we had social. What were mm. the other factors they claimed were the, the key contributors? Social cultural, political, and economic factors. And political. I mean, hello. What, what's I politics know. got to do with people committing domestic violence in their homes? It's got nothing to do we with it. We could talk about cause and effect with this, though, because if, if they're saying that these things are the cause of domestic abuse, uh, I would say, no, actually, domestic violence is the cause of many of those issues. Um, so, for instance, economically, to, even as far back as 2016, uh, KPMG did a did an audit on the real cost of domestic violence to the Australian economy at six billion dollars. That was back then. Whoa, uh, six billion, six billion dollars a year uh, across all of the many areas uh, of of spending, and uh, the, and the human cost of domestic violence, of course, is much greater than money. Uh, but but homelessness. A lot of people would say, oh, you know, the homelessness problem, the housing problem is causing domestic violence, whereas actually, uh, you know, right back in the early, uh, early uh, round about 2013, the Drug and Alcohol Council of Australia released their figures that uh, they believed that 75% of homelessness was actually the result of domestic violence, either directly or indirectly. So, yeah, so it's a consequence, homelessness. It's not a cause. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we have to look in, in both directions, but... The, the well, real well, based problem, upon that, uh, Matt, <laughs> the federal government, to me, doesn't have an answer. Would that be fair to say? I think they don't have an answer, but it's worse than that. And the, and the real danger, I think, here is that if we misdiagnose the sickness, we will prescribe the wrong remedy. And when we do that, people die. And that's what we're seeing every week. Uh, the other downside of that is that if we prescribe the wrong remedy, if, if we don't really understand the problem then people don't get the right remedy and that there might be other solutions out there that are not getting that funding or getting that attention. And and we are going to open up the talkback line shortly and I want to put it out there to our listeners. You may have a comment, you might have a query, you might have a question to ask Matt. Matt has worked in this space for 20 years. He leads a program called the Circuit Breaker Program. He's the best uh, so he's the author of the uh, book Changing Tools. That's what he's best known for and also for this Circuit Breaker program. So we want to hear your thoughts on this topic. Domestic violence is a huge problem in Australia. You might have an experience you want to share or a question you want to ask Matt. And Matt, before we open up the talk lines, can I ask mm. you if it's possible really quickly, what do you think the key issue is here? What is the key driver behind this? I think we can't legislate our way out of this problem. At the end of the day, there's only one group of people that can end domestic violence, and it's not government, it's not police, it's not corrections, it's not vic- it's not victims, it's the ones doing the abuse. And uh, there are many of those people that are seeking change if we can engage with them, but what I tell people everywhere is we can never hope to end domestic violence unless we're engaging 
the ones doing the violence in some kind of a process of change. Anything else we're doing is just going to be moving the same problem around. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.